Good evening, everybody. Hope everybody's having a nice summer evening. Having a perfect summer night here in Pittsburgh. 83 degrees. No clouds in the sky. We're going to keep this relatively short tonight, mainly because there's nothing really big going on in the market. So we're going to do kind of a pre-session here on when to sell or where to set your stop losses. And this is just going to be kind of a precursor where I'm putting all this together to make a probably a full day training uh, on when to take profits. I forget all the things. What were the what are some of the indicators telling you to start taking profits even before you get a sell signal and or a sell signal and a close below the T line. This is one of the major advantages that I found for taking profits. I was always having a problem closing a trade because of greed. Remember, greed has killed more men than lightning. Always hated to take profits because what if it kept going right up from where I sold it? Boy, would I look stupid. Now, that was more relevant to me back then because I had a hard time just even being in a profitable trade, let alone figuring out when to take profits. So when candlesticks came along, it kind of taught me a different viewpoint. Everybody is taught indicators of when to buy. But very few people illustrate, uh, you know, they don't teach uh, when to sell. So there's just some basics that we can use to sell. First of all, candlestick sell signals. Oh, OK. Lost it. Candlestick sell signals at technical levels everybody else is watching. Selling without any confirmation, going short, and where to put your safety stop. So we're going to kind of touch on each one of those. Now, a lot of people, when I, I'm due uh, or have new people in the room, they say, well, what are the sell signals? And that's part of the 12 major signals you need to learn. That's your bread and butter. These are the candlestick sell signals. Doji at the top, bearish engulfing, bearish harami. Shooting star, hanging man, evening star, dark cloud, and a bear kicker. So there's very simple logic built into candlestick analysis that the Japanese rice traders kind of conveyed over the years of very simple logic that says, where do most people buy? They usually buy exuberantly at the top. Where do most people sell? They usually panic sell at the bottom. But looking at the sell signals up here, we've got a few indicators that tell us when it's time to start getting ready to take profits. For example, obviously, number one, just knowing that you're in the overbought condition. Two, when you start seeing exuberant buying at the top of a trend in the overbought condition. And three, look how far away you've moved from the T line. Those are all indications to say, the probabilities are getting pretty close to where you want to start to definitely have stops in place. There's also the element of when you see big, huge price moves, one of the things that we're going to be going, and I don't even know what weekend we're going to do it. It's going to be a full day training, and it's probably not going to be until September so that we're not sitting inside on a nice summer weekend Looking at charts, we'll do that when the weather starts getting a little bit crappy. But here's a very logical statistic. Not logical, just a confirming statistic. If you see a big, huge move way away from the T-line, two things are going to happen. One, something good's happening. It's going to take it higher. Or two, if they open it lower and start trading it lower the next day, you close it immediately. Because statistically, it's not going to go back up until either it comes back up through that open or up through this level. So these are just kind of simple uh, things to say, well, I got a big profit. If I didn't take half of it off here, if it opens lower the next day, I'm closing out the position. So 
a lot of people ask, when do you sell at the T-line? And it's very simple. If you're hugging the T-line in an uptrend, what's our simple rule? You stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. Now, this makes for very easy stop loss implications. If you're up here, up here, and then you start seeing buying, where's a logical place to put your stop loss? It trades back below the open or the T-line. You want to close it out. That tells you there's been that change of investor sentiment. So that's what we call the T-line rule. Remember, the T-line rule is very simple. If you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. Same scenario on the sell side. If you see candlestick sell signals, and a close below the T-line, you can stay short until you see that candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line. Uh, did anybody else lose sound? Can I go back to the previous slide, that one? Uh, Jim, can you tell Diane to log off and log right back on? What did you want to see on the previous slide? It went, oh, it went by so fast. Okay, I'm sorry. A buy signal, you just stay long as long as you don't see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. Now, as you can see, there are some sell signals in here but they didn't close below the T-line. And the same scenario here, whoops, if you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line, you can stay short until you see a buy signal and a close back up above the T-line. Uh, yes, yeah, Peter, I do. I think I might have a few slides and that's the type of thing we're gonna go over in more detail on whatever weekend we decide to do the whole training. But if you're in a trade and it's trading up above the T-line, above the T-line, and they're selling, it's that candle right there that tells you there's a change of investor sentiment. Now the other element is, do you sell before it gets to the T-line? And that's another element that is built into the candlestick charts with the T-line. If the T-line, if the T-line definition is that it is a natural support and resistance level of human nature, and the real powerful aspect of candlestick analysis is if the candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of investor sentiment, and the T-line is the natural support and resistance level of human nature, when you combine those two, you've got a very strong analysis of, uh, uh, of what's going on in a trend. So do I ever sell before you get to the end of a uh, uh, end of day on the T-line? Well, again, the T-line rule has a caveat that you stay long as long as it stays above the T-line with a caveat that the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability it's going to come back and test it. So we can see this a while back on Tesla, uh, and this is where a lot of people in our options room made a huge killing. Uptrend, 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 and then look where you are up here. Look how far away you are from the T-line. And if you just look at this chart, it becomes very apparent of what the Japanese race traders have told us. Where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. So what do we do in this situation when we see it just skyrocketing? We flip to our 10-minute chart and see when we see a sell signal and a close back below the T-line on the 10-minute chart, that's where you start taking profits. So either if you're too far away from the T-line, expect it to come back, or if you're at the T-line, the logic is if you're an uptrend, 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 the investor sentiment changes, when you see a sell signal, there's your hanging man signal. And a gap down below the T-line, 
that just tells you statistically, and, and that's probably not the right word. That just tells you candlestick analysis probability that there's been a change of investor sentiment. If you're long, you close it, if, and you get ready, or if you're thinking of going short, you get ready to go short. So when do you take profits? Are there times when you see that it's not closing below the T line, but it's not going anywhere? Your stochastics are heading down. And then if you also make the analysis that the overall market trend is starting to roll over, what are your probability facets at this point? It could go up, it could go down, and it could go sideways. And why are we in the candlestick charts in the first place? Because we can identify signals and patterns that tell us the probabilities are greatly in our favor that we can project what the next trend will be. If we're in a chart where we can't tell what the probabilities are, close out the position. Move on to another chart where the probabilities are much more identifiable. Does volume play in a factor in selling when extended to the upside? Looking for more volume? Uh, Bob, very rarely. Now, remember, volume does not make any big, it's not a big decision process. First of all, we've analyzed or we've created a universe on stock that trades an average volume on a daily basis that we're looking for. In my case, it's more than 200,000 shares a day. If you see a big reversal signal and huge volume, that's a good indication there's been a major change of ownership. Stochastics are slow and they're 12.33. Nothing set in stone. Somewhere around, uh, oh man, 30 some odd years ago, I just sat at my computer one night and tweaked the stochastics to where they met, where they bottomed out at the bottom and they topped out at the top and 12.33 for my trading which was uh, swing trading trades lasting anywhere from two to ten trading days that worked much more effectively than what was standard at that time which was 14.55 so another thing that I ask myself if I see something like this and I don't know which way it's going my next question is, is this the best place to have my money? Has this got a lot more potential upside, or is this starting to lose that potential? You generally adjust your stop loss order every day, and at what time of day, at the open, close, after hours? Joseph, if I'm owning something and it continues up, I put a stop at some place where it shouldn't trade. So, like on this day, when it opened up here, maybe I put my stop at uh, the previous day's open. Because logic says if it opens up here and comes down through there in the overbought condition, I've probably found the place where the, the bears are starting to take control. So I will do trailing uh, stops. On the doji rule, is that on any on any time frame? Yes. Remember, candlestick analysis is fractal, meaning it works just as effectively on a one-minute chart as it does a monthly chart and everything in between. So the definition of a candlestick signal is it's the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. So if I'm trading futures during the day, I'm usually trading off the 10-minute chart. If I'm swing trading stocks, I'm usually trading off the daily chart. How do rules change? Same scenario, except you might use a different, uh, Tim, you might use a different uh, factor. That if you're holding something long term, maybe you use the 50-day moving average as your uh, support level. And or if you're holding something long term and it's not closing below the 50 but you think it's going to back off, now maybe you put uh, sell some calls against your position, uh, which is called writing uh, calls. So again, when I see something like this, I ask myself, 
Is this the best place to have your funds? So that's selling without confirmation. So if I see the Dow doing this, what's the Dow telling me? It's kind of losing its upside. Uh, 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 losing its steam. So if I start seeing charts that are not uh, acting well, and I see the market rolling over, I'm going to put a stop someplace that it shouldn't trade. Again, here's the doji rule. Market looks like it's starting to sell off. Had a doji. Maybe I put a stop at today at the low of the doji, or definitely at the uh, the T line. So, whoops, I didn't spread this out. Oh, well, Shazam, what happened here? Make this so we can see what we're talking about. So, here's AMD. So, what did we see on this chart that would have alerted us to have a set or put a stop? In. Yeah, I'll have to wait till we go to live charts. Same stochastics, yes. Um, 12, or, uh, 12, 3, 3, slow. So what was our alert? Where do most people buy? They start buying exuberantly at the top. And they started gapping this up in the overbought condition. What other aspect are we looking at that might be telling us it's time to take profits? Look how far away you are from the T-line. And what's our logic? The further away from the T-line, the higher the probability it's going to come back and test it. So if you held on to this, which there wasn't a sell signal, where was the logical place to put your stop? Knowing that they were gapping it up. At today, or the yesterday's open. Because if they came back down through there, where do you think the next uh, next target's going to be? They're coming back to see if it's going to support the T-line. So Tesla, same scenario, except there's a little bit difference here. Look where this gapped up. You weren't quite in the overbought area. And was there something relevant about this gap? Yeah, they broke out through this level. So where was a logical place to put your stop? Back here at the open. Because if they opened this positive and came all the way back down through there, I told you the sellers are starting to take control again. Uh, it wasn't a good place to be. What did we expect when it broke out through this level? At least a 45 degree. ORMP, look how it broke out through this level. Looks pretty good. But where do you put your safety stop? Right there. Because everything is visual on candlesticks. It tells you when the sellers are taking control. Now, if we stopped out right there, where could we be buying? We could have been buying back in this area because what did the uh, chart tell us? They weren't going to close below the T-line. They're taking it back up. I think this is where it closed today. And same thing with Saba. If you're in the overbought condition, you just put a safety stop someplace where it shouldn't be trading. And the reason I kind of emphasize this is because I write, I have a journal, which is number one rule for everybody. You always should have a journal on your desk telling you what you did right and what you did wrong. When I've written a half a dozen times, put a safety stop in when you're in the overbought area. I now know that if I own this stock and it opened up here the next day, I just automatically put a stop right there. It might not ever hit there, but through the years I've discovered when I put a safety stop in at a level that I thought it wouldn't trade, I've been happier than a pig in doo-doo most of the time that I put that stop in that I wasn't sitting in something that was doing this. Adam, 
you saw a while back, they did a nice J-hook pattern, and then look where they gapped it up, up here in the overbought area. So what was the clue? Uh, uh, Ro uh, Zuko, uh, no, it's just visual. You can see they've moved a good distance away in the overbought area. So if we saw this, especially with the gap up, and they moved way up here, what do we do? We simply go to our 10-minute chart and uh, get ready to take profits. Now, the other thing is, if you didn't take some profits up here, what did it need to do the next day? You need to open higher. If they're gapping it down, that means they pulled the plug. You close out your position immediately. So everything that you see in the stop loss and the profit taking elements of uh, candlestick analysis is purely common sense. Once you walk through it and you understand what human nature is doing at those levels, you don't have problems. And my biggest problem was, man, if I sold here, what if this was the Dell of our lifetime and it just kept right on going without me. Boy, would I look stupid. Well, at least now I know when it's time to take profits and what support levels to look for, that maybe it's time to get back in. Uh, George, yeah, the one thing that I've often found, or the one rule that I stick with is, let the chart tell me what it's doing. Okay, let me see what I'm supposed to be doing here. Uh, okay, here's Adam again. I'm just going to go through some that are looking good, even though this market is pretty uh, dismal. Does profit taking, uh, Diane, again, that comes with the analysis of whether the selling is based upon a very strong reversal signal or if it's just selling, that there's no real signal. And there's a very simple logic to that. If a stock is pulling back without a reversal signal, the, in, the anticipation has to be that it's just selling, it's just profit taking, not a full scale reversal. If it was some sort of relevant selling, the Japanese rice traders have had 400 years to analyze what that signal or that pattern was telling us. And if it's not a pattern that they're saying this is a reversal, yeah, it's probably just profit taking. Now you decide, what do I do with this profit taking? Do I sell calls against this, or uh, uh, do I do something to kind of hedge? All right, so as we can see, Adam did the best friend signal. Uh, are the Japanese the best traders in the modern market? No. No. Um, yeah, some of them. Some of them have very long beards, Jay. Um, now, the Japanese race traders started with, uh, well, obviously rice, which is the most boringest commodity in the world. But the result of that was that the Japanese rice traders using candlestick analysis did not become wealthy. They became legendarily wealthy. There were songs in Japan that if I couldn't be a, uh, I think it was a Honshu, which was the major family, at least I'd like to be a lord. Uh, and what it boils down to and what is the obvious lesson for us today is prices do not move based upon fundamentals. Prices move based upon investor sentiment. And all we're doing is learning what to recognize as far as that investor sentiment. How to 
identify profit versus um, yeah Zuko it's uh, again if you see something that isn't a sell signal it's probably just profit taking or let me go to Splunk if you see something like this what is the nature of these signals pretty indecisive it's the decisive signals that tell you there's a, been a change of investor sentiment. So when you see indecisive trading, that's when you're likely to see uh, positive trading uh, um, when you're likely to see uh, more positive trading because the selling isn't that compelling. On which one, Gary? Uh, George, uh, we have an options room. And that's where the conversation uh, uh, is more directed toward option strategies using candlesticks. And so here is, and this is what keeps me and most people the t-line rule is just something that allows you to keep the uh, uh, this is Costco keeps your emotions out of your trading because what do most people think when they have a profit if you're like me um, I think oh man I should take profits because what if this turned around and went to a loss? Boy, would I look stupid that I didn't take a profit. So, or I sell here and before or the T-line came along, so that, there's a sell signal, I'm going to close it out, and then look what it did after that. So now at least I know if I buy because of a buy signal, I just comfortably hold on to it until I see that sell signal and or I start seeing that they're moving too far away from the T-line. And not necessarily. Costco might move sideways for a few days and the T-line catches up. So there are ones, and this is what we call a steady eddy. This is the type of thing you want to get caught in. Um, where would you, I'd still have a st stop, maybe now because it's moved away from the T-line a little bit. I move my stop up to today's open because if it opens and comes back down through there at least we know they're probably coming back to test the t-line uh, let's see okay let me figure out what I'm doing here oh so what we're looking for are the signals and patterns that are going to give us the highest probability. We can see a fry pan bottom. We can see it's coming up through the 50. We can see the 50 of the bobble breakout. We know the probabilities are pretty strong. If this trade's positive, we've got a good positive trade. When we recognize the uh, signals and patterns, we know what the results should be. It just puts us in situations where the probabilities are much better in our favor. But even if the market is moving sideways, there's patterns out there. There's a buildup of investor sentiment that are going to continue, provided we don't see a major change in the market. So even if the market's sloppy sideways, there's patterns out there that are working for some uh, reason other than what the overall market is doing. This is on CVM. Uh, let's see, I had another one. Oh. So, if we know that this is kind of a high probability trade setup, we know the bobble breakout 
is a J-hook pattern much more defined. But if this is wave one, wave three is likely to take AMBA up here to this level. Uh, Robert, yes. Um, we Very simple scanning techniques. Our formulas are out there We're with most uh, uh, scanning softwares. I say most. Metastock, TC2000. Uh, it's already on Thinkorswim. I think uh, Ninja Trader has it. So it's, it's, uh, it's just uh, uh, very simple that if you've got a scanning software that you like, the formulas are very easy to put in. Waves or candlesticks? Len, I don't understand the question. This is candlesticks, a pattern. This is a J-hook pattern, but more defined because it's a bobble breakout. Came up and failed right at a level that everybody was watching, pulled right back to our T-line. Now it's come back up. If you took the 50 out, this is a J-hook pattern. The fact that the 50 is in there just gives us that much more uh, credibility to say, yep, this is where they took profits. Now they're not taking profits. Oh, because we're using the patterns that are developed in candlesticks, a J-hook pattern is wave one, wave two, wave three. And we can see how the wave started. Came up, failed at the 50, pulled back to the T-line, did a bullish engulfing signal, and came back up through the 50. If you took the 50 out, it's a J-hook pattern, a candlestick pattern. And it's more emphasized by the fact that there was, you could identify the different, uh, or the signals in there right on the T-line. So, it doesn't matter whether what you want to call it, wave one, two, three, or using the, uh, these are all, all patterns that are developed by human nature over and over. Let me make sure I didn't skip anybody up here. All right. So here's the one that everybody in the chat room, oh, what happened there? Is making, where did that go? Making good money. BTBT. BT. Notice how this one started. With your best friend kicker signal. Gap up. It pulled back. And for you new folks, this is a relevant indication. Look where it pulled back to. Right smack dab to the T-line. Now why is that relevant? because nobody has the T-line on their charts. It pulled back to what we've already identified with the T-line as being a natural support uh, level. Then it came back up, so you had a breakout, consolidation, now it's been continuing higher. We are looking at that same thing. Oh man, I was going to have such a nice segue into I'm getting closer, I'm thinking. Oh, there it was. So if this one was a big breakout pullback because of the kicker type signal, that's why we look for these type of signals. The kicker signals are your strongest individual candlestick signal. Uh, George, no. The market doesn't give a hoot where you bought, and it doesn't give a hoot where you want to put your stop. The important part of an analysis of a candlestick chart is saying where are the bulls in control and where are the bears in control. Sometimes you can put your stop at a three-tenths of one percent level uh, behind where it is. Other times it might be 13 percent. All depends on the what the chart is telling you. So, no, there is no recommendation for a percentage of a trailing stop. That, that's not identifying what is going on between the bulls and the bears. We will do a stop loss. Again, that stop losses will be part of the uh, when to sell. So here's CAN. Look where the reversal occurred. There's your best friend. 
There's your consolidation. There's your kicker signal. Now, what's the, uh, how long do you hold this one? As long as it doesn't close back below the T-line. AVNW. Look how this one started. The, this is why we go through so many charts to say, all right, what started this uptrend? There was your best friend, a doji followed by a gap up. Now what do you have? Now you have a J-hook pattern. So what's your expectation on this one right now? Or what should it be? That one. Wave one, wave two, wave three, about the same magnitude as wave one. Means it's probably going to come up here at least testing the recent highs and maybe further. Now, will it get there? Who knows? That's what the projection is. But what's the main factor for analyzing a J-hook pattern? The probabilities are pretty strong that it's going to go into wave three. Whether it goes up another 10% or another 40%, we don't know. But we do have the capability that when it does go up, we can see when that selling stops based upon a sell signal. How do you interpret the up and down candles on on scan? On scan. That's not coming up. Uh, yeah, if you've got an echo, you might have, you might be logged in twice. Okay, so what we're constantly looking for is the ones that have the higher probabilities. There's the J-hook pattern, but this is different than a bobble. This came right back to uh, the 50. And what is the normal reaction of humans or human investors, human nature? If they come up through a resistance level, they'll come back and test it to see if it's going to act as support. We can see that it was acting as support. So what's that tell us? We've got a J-hook pattern, and the probabilities are pretty strong because everybody that saw that it came up through the 50 and supported now feel more confident about buying. OCGN. There's kind of your fry pan bottom pattern closed right here at the 50 so what can we look for tomorrow well if it opens positive what's it telling us one it's telling us the fry pan bottom is confirming and two it's telling us the 50 that everybody else is watching isn't acting as resistance anymore and space oops I don't know why I had that in the fry pan bottom but if I recall correctly, space is trading up here after hours. All right, so we did Flexion. Again, that kicker signal. A kicker signal works in both directions. And look at the things that we're looking at here. Out of the oversold area, you had a kicker signal, which is your strongest candlestick signal. You add that to the fact that it broke the, the T-line downtrend. What's the prospects? The prospects is that you're heading higher. Same thing works just as effectively on the short side. Lemonade. Look at your kicker signal to the downside. What's that implying? Wave one, wave two, wave three, starting with a bearish kicker signal, could be the same magnitude as wave one. Now, does that work every single time? No, but the probabilities are pretty good that if you see a strong bully signal, if it confirms, you're all right. In this market, even though we've got some strong signals, they're not constantly working. So this is why you always have a safety stop in place. If you had shorted this one and saw a doji and a hammer, where was the logical place to put a stop? at the top of the doji because of the doji rule that it's going to trade in the direction of how they open after a doji. Well, if they have enough strength to bring it back up through the top of the doji, that means the bulls have taken control, close out the position. Kicker signal. Do you consider the body only? 
inclusive of Wix? Uh, yes. The a true kicker signal has a gap built into it. Opens here, closes here. Gaps up at or above the previous day's open and goes in this direction. Now a true kicker signal shouldn't have a wick to the downside. But even though it does in this case, it still illustrates that there's been a major change of investor sentiment. And for some reason, scan is not coming up over here. Let me try this real quick. No, it's not coming up over here either. Something's wrong. Oh, can? Okay, so now I got to figure out what was the what is the question? Do you how do you interpret the up and down candles on? Oh, down here. Remember what changes direction or investor sentiment? Indecision. So. Would I have bought here? No, because it opened. Let me make this bigger. It opened and immediately started trading lower. So where is my buy? If it came down through here and then came back up through the open, that would tell me the profit taking is over. That's when you can be buying. Next day, probably wouldn't have been watching this now, but the next day I see it did a kicker signal again. If it opens positive tomorrow, I want to be buying. Well, it didn't. So. Now we got a third kicker signal. That told you there's lots of indecision, and now they've told you what their decision is. Now this would have been a toughie to get in. I forget where we recommended it. But anyways, you could have started watching it because of the best friend signal. Now that one's on can. Oh, I see why you saw it scan. That's stock.can. That's not what I want. Let's try this one. Oops. Uh, on this chart, it's just showing a doji gap up. Um, a T K R. This is what we call a trend kicker signal. Notice how you had a fry pan bottom. It opened up here and closed here. The next day, they gapped it up and started trading positive. That's called a trend kicker signal. Now, a kicker signal will be a reversal at the bottom. A trend kicker signal will occur during the trend. A kick in the can. There you go. Um, where is the best friend signal on can? All right. So again, look at your morning star scoop type pattern. Look at your kind of your bobble breakout and your trend kicker. These are all indications that they're confirming this fry pan bottom. Now what do we expect up here? At least a 45 degree. But the overall analysis is this is telling you with bullish signals and a fry pan bottom and a breakout through the 50, there's a lot of buying going on. Okay. There's your J hook pattern. Notice where they couldn't close it. They couldn't close this one below the T line. There's your J hook pattern. Now here observe the obvious. What do we expect coming out of a J hook pattern? Wave one and wave three being at least or approximately the same. So what's that tell us? If this opens positive tomorrow, it's telling us the J-hook pattern is working, number one. And number two, for everybody else that doesn't understand what a J-hook pattern is or using candlestick analysis, they're just seeing it's breaking through the 50. They're ready to buy. That's what creates 
uh, added fuel to these uptrends. And it was a nice breakout. There's your bullish engulfing close above the 200. And then a positive open today. But observe the obvious. Look at your morning star signal, one of the 12 major signals right on the 50. And then they bounced up again through the T-line. That's telling you the bulls have taken control. And look at this one setting up. This is NETSY, N-C-T-Y. But look what it did. Came up, ah, got killed. But what was the other piece of evidence? They couldn't close this below the T-line. So what do you see happening here? A bobble breakout. What do you see going on right here? The same scenario you saw right here. So what are we looking for in human nature? We're looking for what patterns usually can be identified and uh, uh, exploited as far as knowing what investor sentiment is, is doing. Whose handwriting is this? All right. So here's another one that has that prospect of, of heading back up. DLPN. DVAX. There's your fry pan bottom. And look where it closed. Right here at the where the fry pan bottom started, another one that has a high probability. So what's the difference between buying a candlestick signal and selling it in the overbought area and buying a pattern that might already be toward the overbought area? A candlestick signal needs to be bought when things are oversold. A candlestick pattern is likely to occur when a pattern is about ready to break out. It's probably already in the overbought area. Does a candle include? Yes, a, the, that's what makes the candles. But it's the open and the close that makes the body. And remember the most two important aspects that the Japanese rice traders want to identify is where did it open and where did it close. Does it? make a difference that some of these breakouts are happening in stochastics in the stochastics overbought is that the question again the pattern breakouts are usually going to occur when your stochastics are already up in the overbought area there was your buy signal kind of a doji hammer bouncing off the 200 and there is your stutter step. Notice they pulled it back and now did an inverted hammer. So what's this implying? That the bulls have taken control. Probabilities are pretty strong. They're heading for the 50. And we recommended this one a couple days ago. Because look at your best friend's signal. And what did your best friend's signal tell you? They broke out through this level. They're up above the T-line. And what else can you visually see that everybody else would be seeing? They did it right here. So there you have a double bottom and the uptrend starting with your best friend's signal. Just a high probability trade setup. So the best friends are your best friend. If you see a doji gap up, those... When we do our quantified or what we call uh, top rank signals and patterns, there's about 18 of them, which are a combination of candlestick signals and patterns. But the best friend is always ranked number one because there's two elements that will occur after a best friend signal. One, the probabilities are extremely strong that it's going to go positive. And two, the, the magnitude of the move is usually very strong also. Uh-oh. Oh, there. So anytime you see a best friend signal, 
expect more upside. Is it fair to say that the signal is a baseline trigger and a pattern is a continuation sign? And if you want to term it that way, where is the best friend signal on Adam? That was right there. An indecisive, easy for you to say. Indecisive uh, uh, spinning top, doji, gap up. That's your best friend. There was reversals today in the airlines. Not quite a, a strong a best friend as I thought on JetBlue. Somebody was pointing out. That's not a kicker signal. Remember, a kicker signal is a big down day followed by a gap up and a big up day. This is just your doji confirmation. Uh, okay. And there's your bearish best friend. Shooting star doji gap down. And we recommended this one because of the best friend signal. And look where your best friend signal occurred. Right smack dab off the 50. Now, where do you think everybody and their brother is watching this one? They're watching to see what it does once it gets back to the 50. What did this signal tell us? Not only did they reverse it, but they reversed it with great enthusiasm. So. This is what we call convergence analysis. When you can add a lot more or more pieces of evidence that that's where everybody's buying, all converging in the same place. Um, so you have a best friend gap up through the T-line, breaking this downtrend off the 50. Wave one, wave two, going into wave three. Yeah, the the cruise lines all bounce today also. Geo. There was your best friend off the 50. Where did you think the next target was going to be? The 200. All right, so let's regress here a little bit. If you're in an uptrend, an uptrend, an uptrend, what's our rule? When you start getting up toward the overbought area, you put your safety stop just below the T-line. Because if it comes through there, what do you have? You've got the doji rule and a close below the T-line. It should be going in this direction, not this direction. Now you can consider maybe buying it back, but you need to see more confirmation. But at least this gets you out of something that might be heading in this this range for this direction. When you're gapping up that far away from the T-line, this stock went from 3 to 28 in a matter of two weeks. What do you think is happening up here? One, look how far away you are from the T-line. Two, look how you're gapping up. Again, greed has killed more men than lightning. What is the rule number five? Rule number five is a rule that uh, Trader Abe uses, that if you hit a resistance level by stretching up to it, the first time they hit that resistance level, they usually back off. That's where if you're using a daily chart and you see it stretch up and hit the 200, you flip to your 10-minute chart to see what it's going to do at that level. If you're short, very simple rules. You use the previous day's open as a stop. If it closes back up above that level, what's that telling you? Buyers have stepped in right about the same level as stepped in before. That becomes a much lower probability. Now, a blue ice failure, oh, I can't remember any blue ice failures recently, but a blue ice failure is when it falls down through a support level bounces back up, tests that, tests that support level, 
and fails, then it will go down to the next support level, which is the next major moving average. And I can't think of one right now. Same scenario here. When they took it up, it had to open positive and trade positive. You just put a safety stop right there because after a shooting star, your stochastic's heading down, it has to be going in this direction. If it starts going in this direction, you close out the position. Okay, a couple more. There was your best friend breakout. Where do you think your next likely target was going to be? They bounced off the 50 with a morning star signal. This is kind of your McMuffin. Um, there's your morning star signal followed by a doji sandwich or your morning sandwich, which is a McMuffin, which is obviously not a a Chinese or Japanese rice traders terminology since McMuffins weren't invented until later during that time. Nio, there's your bullish Harami telling you the selling has stopped. You can stay long on this one. And snap, whoops. This is why the T-line is very relevant. They came up, they pulled back, and where did they pull back to? The T-line, which is not on anybody's chart. That told us that was the natural support level. Now what do we got going on? Wave one, wave two, going into wave three. And slab is a good example of a 45 degree. Look at your big bullish engulfing signal. Look where it bounced, right off the 200. There was kind of your, your uh, bullish breakout of this level. Now you're in a 45 degree. Let's see, overstock. That is your blue ice failure. Notice how they fell down through the ice. They came back up and they failed. So uh, my late friend Dave Elliott, uh, would describe this as somebody falling through the ice. They come up trying to find the hole they fell through. They can't find it. They drown. So where do they go? They go to the bottom of the pond. Uh, that one is uh, one where if it opens positive, you've got a bullish flutter kicker in progress. In an uptrend, when do you put a safety stop under the previous day's open, and when do you wait for a close under the previous day's? When do you put a safety stop? If I see a signal, like a doji in the uptrend, I'll use the doji rule, which is <coughs> if it trades, it's going to trade in the direction how they open after the doji. If it trades back through the low of that doji, that's where my stop is, even though it might not be quite down to the T-line. If I see something that has hugged let's say for example, you can see how this has hugged the T-line in the overbought area. I'll put a safety stop below the T-line because it's not moving away from it. Whoops. But if it came back down through that level, that tells me that that's probably where uh, uh, where the sellers are starting to take control. Bidu, that could be a blue no 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 blue ice failure, just uh, a downtrend. Okay, we're hold on. We shouldn't be doing individual ones. Um, no, that's a morning star signal. Now remember, a best friend signal is a doji gap up. This is just a morning star signal. A big down day, a, uh, a doji type day, and the third day 
closes more than halfway up that candle. That's a morning star signal. That's one of your 12 major signals. Back a few weeks. On Bidu, okay. Back a few weeks. So what? No, it didn't come back up. Yeah, whatever resistance level it came through, it never came back up and tested it. It stayed below the T line. I forget which one we were looking at that was a blue ice failure. Overstock. Overstock. All right. And so that one came through the ice, came up, tried to find the hole, failed, it went to the bottom of the pond. Now, poor David had me when we were traveling around the country a couple of decades ago, showing people our trading strategies. He would show the blue ice failure. And so to help people remember it, I would tell people, how do you catch a polar bear? Well, you cut a big hole in the ice. And then you take a can of peas and you spread that can of peas around the edge of the hole. And when the polar bear comes down to take a pea, you kick him in the ice hole. Now, obviously, it wasn't a te technical terminology, but people remembered the blue ice area. All right. Oh, and on the short side. This is what we look for. Obviously, a sell signal. There's your evening star signal, bearish left-right combo. And what other, what other element can we add to this chart? It's in a downtrend, and it seems like every time it comes back up and tests the uh, uh, of resistance level, they sell it off. And then... Also, Lemonade did a bearish kicker signal today. So if you're not sure of what this market is likely to do, because on any given day, it can trade down, then it can trade up, then it can trade down, then it can trade up. We don't know what it's going to do tomorrow. So this would be an area um, where... You probably want to have both long and short positions in the portfolio. So that's where you want to find the strongest probability setups. So Lemonade probably would go short on this one on weakness tomorrow. All right. Thank you, Gary. Okay. That's about all I got for tonight. I am probably uh, can't do very many on uh, uh, questions or uh, individual stocks. So... I'll do another 10 minutes. So, Jim, if you want to do the double line and then immediately do the other double line. All right. I'm going to go through these quickly. BXC. Right now, all you can do is stay long as long as it stays above the T line. Don't want to see it trade lower tomorrow. Uh, FRT, kicker signal. Whoops, let me check to see if I did. Whoops, I did that wrong, didn't I? DXC, stay long. BABA, that's a nothing chart. Can't really tell which way that's going. And Tesla, you stay long but I'd still have a safety stop right here. If it turned and went that direction, especially after the doji, they're selling it off. BCRX, big bullish engulfing. Nothing yet unless it breaks out through this level. So you can buy this one on uh, positive trading. Sophie, yeah, this one has to stay above the T-line. Nothing exciting. If I was going to buy this one, I'd want to see it come back up through today's open. Vivo, get ready to take profits. You're in the overbought area. You're sitting right smack dab on resistance. If this opens lower tomorrow, I'd be taking profits. Uh, you, can, you could buy this one on positive trading. 
but you definitely need to see more confirmation. Roblex, uh, uh, nothing. Not until, if I was buying this one, it would be above yesterday's close. When you post a comment in the chat room that are, you are buying a stock, can you also please include the logic of stop? Yes, Joseph, I will do that. DXCM, 45 degree. Stay long and I'd have a safety stop, but today is open. Shouldn't come back below that that level. ABML. Oh, John, 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 John. AMBL. No, 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 no. There's a bobble breakout on Infi. You can buy this one on positive trading. Then don't let it close back below the 50. PayPal. It would go long tomorrow if it opens positive. If it so under the which candle would you? Oh no, I wouldn't buy this one until you see it actually close above the T line. Remember, that's they might just be coming up. That might be a potential blue eyes failure if they fail here. Came down through the support level, failed could be heading down here. So no, I wouldn't be aggressively buying that one until you get confirmation above the T-line. This one you can stay long. You probably want to see this get through the 34, which is kind of this downtrend, breaking that downtrend. ARKW, just stay long. Entry 138 missed a few weeks ago. You could still buy it. Looks like a little uh, J hook type pattern setup. PLTR, nothing wildly exciting. Probably not until they break up through this level. You could buy this one on strength. Just if it, yeah, just want to see if it gets back up toward the uh, the 50. Stay long on this one, Ford. Nothing here right now. Wouldn't be long or short. No direction. And Twillo. Nothing here either. I wouldn't be short, but I wouldn't be long. Nothing on that chart until they can get up through the T line. Draft King. J hook pattern. You can buy on strength with the expectation it's going to test the 200. Um, Micron, this is called a tweezer top. Notice how they failed right exactly at the same level. And you're kind of in this downtrend. If this opens lower tomorrow, you close it out because it's coming back to at least test the uh, 50. Wayfair is the green candle too big on Wayfair. Hey, Joji, then a gap up. Uh, no, that's your McMuffin. Here's your morning star signal followed by a doji sandwich. I'd be a buyer of this one on, on the strength. Amazon is a nothing chart. It got whacked, and there's no, no, no direction right now. Doesn't matter. Yeah, that's not really a bullish harami because it's not anywhere. So I'd be, you know, wouldn't be playing... Uh, playing with Amazon right now. WLTW. I think we did this one. You can stay long, watch to see what it does at the uh, 200. Is there a buy candle or pattern that forms just a day or so before earnings uh, so that we can get into the trade over earnings? Uh, just the probability factor that if you if they were announcing earnings this afternoon, and they were buying going into the close. That means the people that uh, are knowing what's happening in that company, if they're buying going into earnings, that means they know something. Now, does that work in all cases? Definitely not. But the probabilities are pretty good that they're 
the chart is telling you what uh, they expect the earnings to be. Uh, TLRY, nothing. Kicker signal that went bad. And the spirit support.com. That's a nothing chart. You don't want to do anything with this until it gets back up above the uh, T line and you need to see a good buy signal. Live, eh, if you're short, you stay short. I think we did, Sophie. Sophie wouldn't be buying this until it comes back up through today or today is open. Uh, does earnings season have an effect on candlestick signals? Again, you'll usually see what everybody thinks the earnings are going to be, and those are usually the people in the know going right into earnings. So I see going into earnings, they're selling it off and doing a doji or selling it near the low end of the trading range. I'll close it out because that means there's not that much confidence. Yeah, or XPEL, nothing. That's a nothing chart. Would not be long or short. And TCO, uh-oh. That's not coming up over here for some reason. Ride. Nothing there. If you're short, you just stay short. Have your safety stop at the T-line. Monera. Moderna. Moderna. You have a shooting star, Doji Harami. Your safety stop should be at today's low. It needs to open positive and trade positive. If it trades back below this level, you close it out. And Boeing, eh, that's kind of a nothing chart. That'd be someplace else. TCOM, we already showed that if you were short this one, you would have covered the short today with a bullish engulfing right at the same level. I'd be going someplace else now. And fuel cell. Kind of the same scenario on this one. I But with it hugging the T-line, I'd probably use the T-line as a stop. Well, don't want to see it close up above that level. All right, just a few more. BE uh, wouldn't be long or short on this one. You need to see more information. You do have a piercing signal at this level. You could be buying this one on positive trading. BABA, uh, we did that one. That's a nothing uh, chart. No direction. TAL, that one's bottomed out. Now you watch to see if they can bring it back up. But right now, it would not be in this one, long or short. That one's not coming up. Square, just stay long, using the T-line as support. We did Micron. What happened to W? I don't know. Earnings. I almost have a little island reversal. Notice how you can draw a circle around without touching anything, and you do have a, a McMuffin. ABMD, A B M D broke out through this level. Anticipate more upside. Pin interest, nothing. When they get slammed like this, if you are short, take your profits. 
the uh, directions now disappeared. There you go. NVIDIA by Humbug. Stay long. You can see the piercing signal. You can see how the T-line actually supported. Now you're watching to see what it does at this level. AMC, eh, if this opens higher tomorrow, I wouldn't be short, but I wouldn't be going long until you see a close above the T-line. AMD, we use this as an example of where to put your stop. I would suspect they're coming back to test the, uh, uh, the T-line area. BB, nothing of any great interest here. It doesn't have a signal. So here's a good chart to say it might be basing, but notice that this was not a signal today, which means eh, it might be heading up, but I'd rather go find one where I can actually identify the signal that tells me I've got much better probability. Disney is kind of a nothing chart. It has been going nowhere now for a while. I'd be trading someplace else, especially it being an institutional trader. And Apple is having a hard time getting out of this wedge. Would not be long or short this one until it breaks one way or the other. Uh, Diane, not so much at trading sectors at specific times of the year. They, I might trade them at specific times of the year, but it's because it's, they're showing strong signals. Okay. Oh, A R K W. Just stay long on this as long as it stays above the T line. Okay, everybody, we still are in a very lethargic summer doldrums market. <coughs> Obviously, the Dow is not giving you any direction, but the fact that the NASDAQ is showing that it's supported off the T line. Now you watch to see if they can break out through this level. So with that, still have some very good uh, uh, profits and trades. And this is why the kicker signal and this type of setup is something you want to learn just to see when do you start buying and something that has broken out. So with that, everybody, have a good evening. We will see you bright and early in the chat rooms tomorrow. We'll see you.